What is happening guys? Welcome back to the walkthrough and we're ready to continue on looking at Sunken Valley. So, from the shrine the first thing we're going to do is actually go backwards and before we even do that, let's switch up our ninjutsu to Puppeteer. Now the main thing is Puppeteer, not only is it cheaper, only costing 5 spirit emblems as opposed to 6, but Puppeteer is honestly one of the most broken OP abilities in the game. You might think blood smoke's cool, you know, you use blood smoke, smoke goes around, you can get a free death blow. Puppeteer allows you to literally turn something into a puppet and have it fight on your behalf. I don't even need to really explain how OP this is. You'll just see it in action. So put that bad boy on. Um, you should also aim to uh, upgrade some skills as soon as you can. Your, uh, not your skills, your um, ninja tools. Uh, as for this area, highly, highly suggest having your loaded umbrella, ideally with the magnet upgrade. Stop that. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning, I don't think it works very well here. But so, uh, the Sabimaru is supposed to work well against these guys, just to, to you know, kind of reset and show it again. Uh, the whole thing about the Sabimaru... You know, wielded in Wars of Old, the blade's blue rust was used to drive off inhuman Okami warrior women. Even now, it's likely effective against their descendants. And if we go over here, go to the text that they, we got, Gatehouse Key. No, for gun for it. Sunken Valley Clan, this elite group of women, are descendants of the ancient Okami clan. So based on that description, we should assume that the Sabimaru works well here. Despite that, the only thing that I think it actually works well against is one of the bosses in this area. And just to, to show that, you know, I'm gonna go after this guy with the Sabimaru here. See, and it's like, I mean, yeah, we're building up a lot of, uh, you know, we're building up posture damage, but we're not actually poisoning them. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm not sure if it's just a uh, an error on behalf of like the translation. I'm not sure if the, the poison resistance of these enemies was just never updated or, or what the case is. But either way, it doesn't seem nearly as effective as I was hoping it would be. So just food for thought there. But anyway, so we're going to go over here first. Nice little area. Now... There is loot here. However, if you take this loot, later when you come to this area, dudes are going to respawn. Because essentially what you're doing is stealing grave offerings. But it's a prayer bead, so these guys just got to fucking get over it, you know? Like, I don't I don't care. Um, there's also a boss. One of the, the headless is down in this water right here. So later on in the game, you're looking for headless. This is where you go. Um, should be another pacifying... Back side of one of these shrines. They get two pacifying? I swear to God, because in my notes I wrote down, kill two dudes, cross ahead, kill another two pacifying, and prayer bead. Might be another pacifying here that I'm overlooking, but anyway, the big thing is we wanted to get the prayer bead, so uh, after that, come on back. Head forward. Got a delicious smoothie drink into this walkthrough. Strawberry mango is life. Up, down. Gotta pick up the fistful of ash. This guy shoot first before we, uh... You notice they like to do perilous attacks there. Um, as you saw, just, just kill them. Uh, so we're gonna follow the path around and hit the rope up. And uh, follow that up. Kill this guy. And progression is actually heading down, but we're gonna go up first for some loot. Should be a uh, yellow gunpowder and a gourd seed up this way. Nice thrust. Last and only time you get that off. Oh. Word seed. Got the yellow gunpowder.
and then we're heading on back. Um, let's see. Jump down for a shard. Shard at. Head? Yeah. Shard, and then a bit further for an antidote. Right there. Creep along here. Uh, the next area has a few different dudes, including a shotgun one. Uh, you'll want to be careful of the, the shotgunner, bro. Saw another thing for a second. Um, anyway, shotgun guy is kind of over there near the fire, so we're going to jump and show you puppeteer jutsu. you are able to uh, basically roll under the shotgun blast. See, this is why Puppeteer is so awesome. Like, these dudes are just having a gun battle over here. Killed that guy for me. All right, grab the scrap magnetite. Um, these guys will keep fighting until they die. Whenever you're tired of them, just go ahead and kill them. Get your loot back. Uh, as you saw there, the icon showed up again. <clears throat> I can re-kill them and re-puppeteer them if I want them to last a little bit longer, but usually it doesn't really work. Um, so anyway, shotgunner, got the magnetite. If you talk to this guy, he talks about the gum for it was more formidable than we heard. We were reckless to go in unprepared. It takes me back. A tempo simple assassin there. But go ahead and rest here. Now it's time to tackle the gun for it. This area can be a little tricky. Uh, we actually have a boss up ahead as well. As soon as we get down there, so we're gonna. I'm gonna actually try out the Sabi Mari here and see if it works. But just get ready because shit is gonna hit the fan fast. Rope. Um. I'm straight up to her. Now that we got her poisoned, I'll oh, just take that off. I'm just going to stay on her a little bit. Anytime she tries to do that grab, I just use the umbrella, counters her out. As you can see, the basic thing here is honestly, I'm just spamming the shit out of R1 and then just hitting R2 anytime she tries to do like anything. The shots, the grabs. Prayer bead. Probably help if I upgraded my Sabi Maru, so I might do that. Now there's some loot here, but there's a bunch of assholes. Uh, we can grab the fistful of ash, and if you look down, you'll see more loot, but it's really tricky to get. So if you really, really insist on getting it, drop, grab, jump, rope. Very quick. Don't even worry about killing that guy. He's not worth it. The reason I say that is because there are a bunch of dudes that are going to be shooting up ahead. Uh, which is the main reason why I suggest the umbrella. Uh, now, you can use the umbrella. There's two, two possibilities here. You can either use the umbrella or, alternatively, serpentine. Actually, what we're going to do, just because this area is a huge pain in the ass, this wasn't in my notes, but I think it'll be a little bit easier. Ah! Want to hit that idol. Rest to reset. Oh, a couple of them are coming, it looks like.
Can't stop me. This is another decent area to farm as well, um, in terms of like, you know, areas to, to look out for that are good for farming. Because from here we can just stealth back and kill most of those guys instantly. So we got, let's see, Magnetite, Antidote. I'm gonna Jutsu his ass. This just makes things a little bit easier. Those two will keep fighting. While they're fighting, we can go and dismantle the rest of this stuff. Up tokens. Uh, this will allow you to just rope back around. Make sure you actually looking at it now. I think we have to do that after dropping down here. Oh. That's bad. See, this is why I make notes. No, we don't need to do that. So, as you can kind of see, there's firecrackers all over the place. Trying to be stealthy in this area, not really an option. There we go. I like that approach a lot more. Sure, let everyone know you're here. Scrap. Right, and I think the only stuff left were the items actually in the fort. Some loot that I did not suck up. Loot I didn't grab up here either. That scrap magnetite, and the last one is there, up nice and high. Sugar. So here with the victor. Dying. Hell it. Powder. Heavy coin purse. Uh, but the farm here in particular is, you know, pretty easy. I wouldn't suggest going and uh, fighting everybody, but you can uh, run on in. Have the one guy run on back. So I know 300 isn't a ton, but it is a, uh, a pretty safe farm to do. You can do that consistently. So if you're really struggling for points, that is uh, going to be your go-to. But anyway, uh, talking about our skill tree, the next thing we're going to be working towards is the prosthetic arch tree. As I mentioned, mid-air combat is pretty useful, but uh, there's not a lot of bosses just yet that we'd really need this for. This is more of a like super late game kind of thing. So instead, we're going to work on picking up our core skills here, which will allow us to begin working in our prosthetics a lot more smoothly.
Um, just, let's see, Gokens, Ungos, uh, Winnet Pellet, Gunpowder, Heavy Purse, Magnetic, good. Cleaning up notes. Okay, and we have another boss up next. Uh, right, let's jump down and get this first. Grab those. Uh, there's more to this area, but we're going to get it all in a second here. Now, head on down and get ready for Setipede Part 2. Same strategy applies as before. Tight. And the large fan, which gives us divine abduction. Really, really cool, uh, cool, uh, shabby tool there. Before you go through this, there's a couple more things we want to get. Um, let's see, so we're going to drop down this first. Put on shurikens for what's coming. So the first place we're going to go is they're going to take the left path. Split when we drop. See there's a left and a right here, so go left first. After this, look over to the right. Jump. Oof. Why did it move me all the way back there? Ah, there we go. I was I missed the one that's right above my head. Um, so let me see. Take the left path. Look out to the right. Continue with a hard right. This way first. And there's a couple things. guys. Big thing was killing the, uh, the lizards first. Take them out to get another prayer bead. Well, some contact medicine. Um, minor loot and prayer bead. Now we're gonna head back up. Go to this way. Let's see. More of our poisony friends. Get some divine confetti. Um, and three confetti at that. Pretty nice pickup there. Okay. Then from here, we're going to. Grab the Mibu Blue Soul and turn around. That would bring us. Oh, hang on a second. Mibu Blue Soul. Oh no, never mind. I didn't need to do that. That was a trick jump. Should just be able to uh, pop right back out of the shrine. Ah, yes, there we go. That and up. There we go. Loop completed. 
All right, so once again, we have four prayer beads now, so go ahead and pop those, making us even beefier. Just love how just thick that health bar is getting. Oh man, it's fucking good. Loving the health bar. So we got one more thing to do before we wrap up this episode. Look at this area. There's like a bunch of loot over there. What's that giant white thing? Looks. What's this? Oh no! Danger Noodle came back. Ah! It's supposed to happen. Anyway, as soon as the bridge breaks, you gotta haul ass. Oh god! Haul ass and get into the cave. Oh boy! Slippery snake. No snack. This is my cave. I'm be sneaky. Sneakier than snack. Can't see me because I'm on the other side of his body. <laughs> Never gonna get me a snack. Don't worry, he's gonna get his soon enough. No, you don't, snack. Stop trying to bite me. Anyway, rest here. Welcome to Ribbon Cave. Uh, so there's actually quite a few things in that water. Later on in the game, we're going to have the ability to dive, so we're going to be coming back here to explore it later. But for now, no real point. Um, and I'm baiting. Yeah, we, we can do uh, we can do Ribbon Cave, I guess. Got time. How, what was this episode? Didn't we conquer? Damn, we did all of Sunken Valley, though. Yeah, why not? Let's just go. Hop up here, grab uh, the adamantite, just uh, my notes up a little bit. Alright, so we're going to follow the path out. Um, leap across. Hang on. Missing something here. My notes are going to follow the path. Uh, out, around, then turn, snap seat on the left, pacifying on the right. Come here, monkey. Second. I'm overlooking something here. It's according to my notes. Uh, let's see. Follow the path around to the... Guess I'm not. Let's jump up for the adamantite. Follow path out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Out and across. I'm supposed to cross the statues. Alright, follow path. Snap seed on the left. Stuff I'm referring. No, oh, I don't know. This will do this approach instead. Me, um. Mention there is a snap seed. Oh, there's the snap seed. Huh. Should be a pacifying as well. I was just reading too heavily into my own damn notes. Um, let's see. Drop down for contact med. And further down for an Akko sugar. I have no idea how these monkeys didn't just see me. But I'll take it. Med and then 
There's the Akko Sugar. Right, and then follow the path around to the left for another contact med. here. Cross up. Now we're going to fight the monkey army. I did not mean to do that, but... I know this looks irritating as hell. It is. Uh, Whirlwind works kind of well here. Shouldn't really have that much trouble. I mean, you can one-shot most of these monkeys if you've been upgrading the way that we have until now. And, uh, you know, obviously if we have, if you have picked up the skill where you heal on death blows, you're not going to have any uh, health loss. But as you can see, even though I did that accidentally there, the, the puppeteer monkey can definitely uh, make this a bit easier since it just distracts everything. Sorry, little one. And some monkey boos. So, go back here and grab this. Got another pacifying agent. Here. And an Ungo's across the ravine. All right, now we're going to go back up our way across. Jump over to this rope. Rope around. Go. And rest. And with that, you have conquered the majority of the Sunken Valley. Uh, we have uh, this last zone. Well, there's there's two parts left. Uh, so, you know, Fruits of the Serpent, there's two kind. This is the other lady talking about the Fruits of the Serpent. Don't give her your rice, use it for yourself. Uh, but the, basically, we can go through this poison-filled shit show. And that will lead us to one of the Serpent Visceras. And then we have a, a boss over here, good old Guardian Ape, which is pretty hard, I would say. Um, you can fight this guy right now. But to be honest, um, I would very much recommend holding off for now, because before we fight him, we are going to get uh, at least, just off the top of my head, I know we have at least one more memory we're going to acquire, and uh, quite a bit more vitality and posture. He's definitely very hard, and right past him in that little cavern right there is the White Lotus that we need. So in a sense, think of him as uh, like a key progression boss. Like he drops a memory and all that jazz. So we're going to save him for later. But either way, uh, that's going to wrap this one on up from here. Our next episode, we're going to make our way through Batisvata Valley and then down into the depths. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys then.